so sorry, you know, started before you know, all those slides up. Um, I'm going to be a very odd speaker for today. You know, you've got a different galaxy of uh, dancers and artists and different people. But I make sure that I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to tell you a very important public health message at the end of my talk how you can be responsible in this country to fight against HIV disease. Again, during the course of my talk, in the next uh, 17 minutes, it's much more faster than a 2020 cricket, where I'm not going to teach you how to treat a HIV patient, but I'm going to tell you what are the facts available today from some of those scientific work which me and my team has been doing here in Chennai, and how it's going to translate into public health in our own country of India. Also, I'd like to thank the management for this kind introduction, and also I feel it's a thorough honor to speak with other galaxies like legends like Mansur, George, and Anita and others. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and can you go to the next slide, please? I don't know how to move this. Is it moving? Yeah. Uh, just to go into that, uh, some of the statistics. Uh, since my slides are not bright, can you please switch off uh, these uh, lights in this panel, just above the slides? <coughs> can you please switch off so that you can look bright? <coughs> so can you please switch off these slides? White lights, thank you so much. So, so this is a figures from the United Nations program. They make figures every two years. They do surveillance like any other diseases like swine flu, like malaria and TB. We do it for HIV. The 2011 figures are still not available. They are still working on because some of the issues in different countries. So this is an available uh, reported one uh, for global, uh, 2009. There are around 33 million people living with HIV. 33 million people. And out of those, around 4 million living in our South and Southeast Asia, and out of those 3 million in our own country, 3 million is 30 black people living in India. In a country where we talk about one man, one culture, and uh, of course multiple culture, and uh, you know we all feel that one is faithful to others, where well, we have 3 million people living with HIV. So what we are going to do for them? So again, if you look at this summary of uh, this global, there are around 1.8 million deaths in 2008, 9 alone, all in this HIV disease, it's a genetic disease which has devastated the whole world, especially Africa, and including in India, which not many figures came in our newspapers, but I'm going to show you certain data soon. So this is a, a data from our own country. The first case of HIV was detected in our own city here in Chennai by my director, Dr. Siniti Solomon, who is a well-known microbiologist. I'm sure many of you have seen her in newspapers and, and television channels. She comes all the time and talks about HIV disease. She detected the first case. And since then, initially it was among the most risky people, among sex workers, truck drivers who are away from homes, had multiple sex contact, and patients attending sexually transmitted disease clinics. So what happens immediately, soon after a couple of years, we started seeing in pregnant women, where we interviewed many of those pregnant women, their only sex partner, their husbands. So this makes very clear, in a country like India, for many women, marriage is a major risk factor for HIV acquisition. And also, we found that many of them are married and born women. This very clearly states that HIV today in India has gone from the higher risky group to these Ingestion, that means we are just gone into the general public. That means all of us are infected or affected with HIV disease. Don't think it's only among the you know, riskiest group. So this is a scenario from India. We are much ahead among you know than United Nations, where we have got a figure till 2011, where we have projected around two to three million people living with HIV in India. This is not a headcount number. It's something like a projection based on different different surveillance we do in collaboration with the US government. And majority of the mode of transmission in India, northern India and west and south, is through multi-partner sexual route. And in eastern India, where we border with the Golden Triangle with Myanmar, where a lot of drug trafficking happens, where we feel a lot of HIV infection is through injecting drug use, which is a common practice among young adolescents there. And if someone asks you a, a, a figure, what proportion of the people in our country has been infected? Around 0.35. It's very less in terms of density where we talk about 1 to 2 percent in Africa, but don't forget, we have about 1.2 billion people, and among them, 0.35 is a huge number, and again, majority of the people who are already detected with HIV positive, they are sick with multiple infections, which I'll talk very briefly. Before I set my talk on the core talk on HIV prevention, I'll just briefly tell you, this is caused by a virus, it's a very dangerous virus, where it's a very tricky virus, where these scientists are not able to kill this virus, it's a very tricky virus. This virus goes and 
destroys the human blood T cells, which is very important again to fight against diseases. We call it as white blood cells, which is to protect against diseases. So this uh, virus goes and selectively destroys these white blood cells, and as a result, what happens is these infected individuals prone to develop various types of infections, like skin lesions, like this, and tuberculosis, which is very common in our country. So the fungal infection as such that these individuals cannot swallow anything and also these infected individuals can develop certain pneumonia and brain infections and they die out. So all happens because this virus attacks the white blood cells and thereby the immune system drops and they pick up one by one infection, these infections kill these individuals. We have got medications either to prevent or cure all these infections but we don't have any drugs to contain this virus. The virus will continue to go up, will continue to damage this immune system. But we have got some wonderful drugs available, which, which I have shown here. This exactly looks like a doll, like an Italian uh, restaurant menu. We have got 18 different wonderful drugs available. With these drugs, we cannot cure this virus, but we can perfectly contain the virus replication, which I'm going to show you again in the same part too. Where the virus, when it uh, destroys the white blood cell, it uses various pathways. It enters through a mechanism, through a receptor, uses various enzymes. I'm not going into the medical details because not for this audience here. It involves various enzymes to get into the human white blood cells for the multiplications and for further uh, replication inside the white blood cells. So all happens inside our own human lymphocytes. Now we have got all these wonderful drugs which I said we call as ART or antiretroviral treatment. What it happens is it goes through this pathway, how this virus attacks its white blood cells, prevents one by one, thereby these replications inside the white blood cells can be thoroughly prevented, thereby these infected individuals, when we give this therapy, antiretroviral drugs, they will not lose their immune system, they will be HIV positive lifelong, which we cannot eradicate using these drugs, but we can prevent all those infections, which I said earlier, we can prevent them, because their immune system can be intact. This is something, what is called a fantastic achievement, which had happened in the history of medicine, which had not happened to any medicine, any other disease. You take diabetes, which is 250 years old, you could still die of it. Take kidney diseases and cardiovascular and so many things. We, cannot, we have no remedy to cure, we can only control. But this HIV, which is a killer disease, which was discovered 30 years back in the US, 25 years back here in, in Chennai, where we have got a fantastic drug, drugs available, which is we can make, prevent deaths, thereby this disease can become yet another chronic manageable disease. This has happened not only in the US and Europe, but also in our own country here in Chennai. So this is a study which we published, which is a very landmark publication, which some of you have seen in, in a newspaper at that time in 2003, where we came up to the press and talked to everyone that death in HIV in India came down dramatically year by year because of more and more drugs being available. And also I have to tell you that these drugs are manufactured in India by the Indian generic companies and I've been involved from the beginning, from 1994 in the drug development. In fact, I'd like to tell you that I feel honored to be part of this uh, drug trial team where we were involved in developing one of the first molecules called Sidobidin in India and subsequently a lot of other drugs which me and my team got involved in doing drug trials here in Chennai where today it's all lead to such reduction in death rate in HIV infected people. And following this, today, HIV disease has become yet another chronic manageable disease. We have a lot of drugs available. I'm showing 18 different drugs in that slides, it's like the Italian Western menu. If that drugs fail, well, we have got a lot of newer drugs available. And even if it fails, there are a lot of newer medications either under development or in the process of coming to India or by the Indian companies. With all these different groups of drugs available, today some of these HIV positive and if they need therapy for 40 years. So we can make the uh, live like a normal person by preventing all these infections. Someone who needs therapy at the age of 30 for 70 to 75 years, we can make them healthy, which is a fantastic achievement. By the time they can be killed with other natural and unnatural disasters, which a lot of young people today die of cardiac disease. But today in HIV, people don't die and they live longer because of this therapy available. So because of this today, HIV disease has become yet another chronic manageable disease like diabetes and hypertension. Someone who asked me a question, whether I like to get diabetes or HIV, I can get HIV. He says, stigmatized disease. For diabetes, you cannot eat anything. You know, if you develop a kidney disease, you'll develop. Doctors will tell you, doctors like me will tell you, don't eat salt, don't eat anything. How can we eat? Here we tell all my patients, 
eat well, eat anything on the earth, no diet restriction. And take this drug, you're fine, you're wonderful. But on the other hand, stick my pills on. They can't discuss to anyone, I go to your doctor who will treat HIV. They can't take their family member, they got HIV. They hide their medication. It's a huge stigma. That's why I'm talking to you. Now, how you can play a huge role. I told you now, we have got drugs available. So don't make this disease stigma based disease at whatever level, as a student, as a CEO of a company, as management of big things, like parties. You can't play a very major role in making HIV disease a non-stigma based disease in a country like India, where we got a sex talk being a taboo. We have a lot of religious cultures. Anything we discuss about talk, about sex, it's a big taboo where you all can make a huge change in our country so that we can identify all these people, send them for testing, and we can put them on these medications to live longer. So we found this, we got drugs available. The next part of my talk, in the next three or four minutes, which I'm going to talk to you and why do you give you a political message is today I tell you transmitted from one person to another person. I don't want to talk to this audience on how it spreads. It spreads through sexual growth, through needles, through contaminated blood transmission that from an infected mother to a child. It cannot spread through any other casual contact like hugging, kissing, or uh, even using the same plates or spoon or even by mosquito bite, it cannot spread. And also, these scientists have found that someone's virus level is very high, there are more chance of, can you please go back to the previous slides? Previous slide, please. Okay. The more, more chance of HIV transmission to others. Go back, go back. Ah, yeah, hold on. So this shows, uh, someone's virus is very high, there's more chance of HIV transmission. Also, this means shown in this particular graph, where x-axis shows we can measure the virus level by doing a technique called PCR, polymerase chain reaction, and the y-axis shows the percentage of transmission. Someone's virus level is very high, there is more chance of HIV transmission, either from male to female or from female to male. This very clearly shows us the virus quantity is a major culprit. And I told you a little earlier, now we have got wonderful drugs available, which can, we can completely suppress the virus, make live longer, people live longer, can we use the same technique to prevent HIV transmission, especially in a country like India or Thailand or in Africa, where doing a behavioral change in using having safe sex is going to be a monumental task because a huge population, how we are going to have uh, implement all these programs. Can we prevent HIV transmission by identifying everyone who is HIV positive, put them on this virus medication, reduce their virus, and preventing transmission? Same thing we did for swine flu, try to identify everybody, either isolated them or treated them. Or when we develop a malaria, we go to the community, mask and treat everyone to prevent transmission. Same thing can we do with HIV. So we did that and we are being successful in certain things. Today, somebody is with HIV positive, a pregnant mother, if you give the drugs, we can prevent transmission to their child. So, which is the greatest thing. And also, by accidentally, someone is having an added realistic injury, we can do this drug to prevent transmission. And also, someone who is raped, by an HIV infected person or unknown person, if they come to us, we got certain drugs so that they won't develop this HIV. And also there are trials happening just before having a sexual act. If you swallow this medication, can you prevent? We do not know the right answer, trials happening, but we did a fantastic trial which the results are out a couple of months back. You have seen in Hindu and all the science magazine throughout the world where we found that someone who is HIV positive, if you treat them, reduce the virus, we can prevent transmission to others. So this is a very large trial we did for HPT and O52 with a collaboration with the US government in 12 different countries and also uh, in India also by one of those investigators for this trial. We did it in different countries where we recruited HIV positive couple, married couple, where one partner HIV positive, another negative, where we did give them condom, we did talk about safe sex to them. Also to the infected partner, we did uh, giving antiretroviral drugs. And another group, we didn't give any ritual drugs, but we give them all the other standard of care like counseling and sex sex. And we follow these couples over a period of time, not only in India, also in Africa, in Thailand, in America, and South America. It's a very large global trial. We did five years of cost of $2 billion to do this trial in Chennai here at the HS hospital. We recruited 250 HIV positive couples and Pune 175 and remaining from different parts of the world. 1,700 couples. And very recently, we saw a fantastic thing which had never happened in the history of medicine. What we showed is, if you give antiretroviral drugs, find everyone, give antiretroviral drugs, we can prevent transmission among people who have been taking the drugs, as compared to people who are not taking the drugs. But we found that there are 39 transmission events, out of those 28 are linked. That means they have been infected from the same partner, 
there are some people, 11 people, they have had other extramarital sex and they have been infected through other sources. But among the people who have been linked, we found 27 people didn't take antiretroviral drugs. This very clearly shows that these antiretroviral treatment not only helps people to live longer, but also prevent HIV transmission. So we tabulated these results with many other findings which is already been published and we found that there are around 96% efficacy in preventing transmission. So we did vaccine trials, which failed, only 31%. We talked about uh, condoms, circumcision, and so many STD treatment, all much less. Even if there is a, going to be a perfect vaccine, it cannot be 96% efficacy. And following this, I'd like to tell you that this has been declared as a top 10 scientific breakthrough in science in, for the 2011, which uh, you know, we have been part of this team. This is something, what is, where it's going to happen uh, in the history of medicine. So here, why I'm talking to you, to this audience is today, HIV disease is a big stigmatized disease. People are not coming out for testing. People are not coming out for treatment because it's a big taboo. Mind you, you all can play a huge role in whatever ways you have been doing, either as a student or a CEO of company or whatever you are doing. How you can make these people to come out for testing and get this medication which is not only good for them, but also good for the community. So whereby we can save the next generation of life in India. Today, this disease affects especially people with less than 30 years of old, most economically productive group. If they have been gone, what's going to happen to our country? What's going to happen to the IT companies? You know, all the very young people. So you all can play a very huge role in whatever ways you can by using these scientific results to prevent HIV in our country. Before I have just one minute left, I'd like to tell you that I'm from a center called Biology Care, which is founded by Dr. Siniti Salam, who's a well-known microbiologist, where I direct the HIV clinic there, where more than 17,000 patients take treatment in our center. We are also one of the sites for U.S. National Institute of Health to officially to do clinical trials to prevent as well as to cure HIV. There is no cure available. There are a lot of trials available. We also work with many U.S. universities around the globe and as well as uh, you know, in Australia, as well as in, in Europe uh, to test different medications as well as do different types of clinical trials. We do and many of our researchers come into many of those treatment guidelines to prevent HIV and as well as to treat. This is something what is from the WHO guidelines where many of our research findings from our center has gone through that. We continuously educate many physicians how to manage and how to prevent HIV disease and also I thank this opportunity to talk to this road. Hope it will be useful so that you spread the message around whatever you know, people you come across who need this testing and refer to the appropriate places and for testing. And I also like to tell you that government of India gives free and antiretroviral drugs for every HIV infected person who needs it, which many countries, today US cannot afford, which India can afford. Half a million people are getting free and antiretroviral drugs from our Indian government programs. This is something where we all can utilize to get this done. Thank you very much for this opportunity.